Did you just apply for the Amazon Influencer Program, get approved, and then reach this point where you realize you still have to get this blue lock removed from your account in order to unlock on-site commission? Well, if that's you and if you're at this critical point in your Amazon Influencer Program journey and you're struggling, maybe you've already been denied once or you're scared to be denied and you know you only have three tries to get through, then this video is going to be for you. Now, I get asked all the time if people or if I can send people my first three videos, the three videos that I use to get approved into the program and they just want to use my video to kind of compare their video against and see if, you know, they should be approved based off of my video. Well, just a little side note, I did get approved back in February, so things have changed. Maybe Amazon has taken a different approach as to how they approve people into the program, how they remove the blue lock, and so many other factors. In the Amazon Influencer Program, Amazon is pretty vague about a lot of things, and this whole blue lock situation is another little vague area where there's not super concrete details on like what you need to do in order to be approved and you know what you need to do to get denied. Well, since I get asked this all the time, if you stay tuned to the end of this video, I am going to attach my three videos here at the end so you can go and reference them whenever you want. Just make sure you keep in mind, like I said, that these videos are from February, so things may have changed. Now also in this video, what I wanna do is just talk to you guys and give you guys some tips on how you can get approved and hopefully get you approved on your first submission. Now there are a lot of things to kind of take into consideration when making your first three videos, and you know, you can go about it a number of ways. There's not one right answer or one wrong answer, but as as long as you get approved, then you're good to go. So the very first thing I kind of want to talk about is when you're making these videos, try to make videos over products that don't have any other videos. Now my reason behind that is just because they won't have anything to compare your video to. And if there's no other people reviewing the product, they might just let you through so that your video can live on that product page and nobody else is reviewing the product anyway. So when you're picking your products, try to look for products that aren't competitive, that nobody else has made videos for, and your video would be the only one. Because, like I said, they won't compare it, there's nothing to compare it against, and they'll probably just go ahead and approve you if you meet all of the other qualifications. So that's my first tip. Another tip that I have for you is kind of common, a no-brainer. Just make sure you're following all of the Amazon guidelines. Make sure you're not talking about price. Make sure you're not giving health-related or medical-related information in your video. Just basically you want to spit the truth and fact. Don't give them your opinion. Don't say this will cure this, this, you know, helps with that. Just, just tell it how it is. Tell the straight up facts, the straight up specifications, the straight up information as what's to include it in the box or in the package, what you receive, um, what kind of batteries, how you turn it on, how you work the thing, how you build the thing. Just give that kind of information, the known facts. Don't go give a whole bunch of opinion because Amazon doesn't really like that. So as long as you're following the Amazon guidelines there and not saying anything that you're not supposed to include in your videos, then you should be good. I have another video where I discuss all of the guidelines so you can watch that if you need to, you know, learn about it in more detail. The third tip that I have for you to get approved on your first attempt would be to just make sure your video quality is good, your audio quality is good, and your background is good. Now, Amazon specifically stated, I don't know where I saw this, but they do not want a busy background. They don't want distractions. They don't want to hear other people in the background or kids crying or screaming or anything like that. Try to just make sure it's as quiet as possible with the best audio that you can capture as well as the best video that you can capture and try to go up against like a plain background or something that's not too distracting. I know mine can seem a little bit distracting, but because I'm so front centered in the camera and I like to hold my products up like right in front of the camera, I think that also helps. Now another little tip that I give people is instead of just showing yourself all the time, maybe give some up close video of the product, like some B-roll or some above angle 
shots at your product down below. Just try to show the product as best as possible because sometimes you may not even realize you're doing it, but you're like talking about a product and then you kind of like put it off to the side and you just continue talking. And when you're doing that, the viewer really can't see the product. They're not really getting the full grasp of the product that you're trying to showcase, you know? They're just listening to you talk and seeing you. So sometimes that may happen. Just try to show the product as much as you can because that's the main thing with these review videos. Tip number four, just try to keep these review videos as authentic as possible. You don't want to script them. You don't want to pay other people to do them for you. If you're awkward in front of the camera, just work on your presence. Get a little bit better before you submit your three videos. I say all of this because a lot of people are trying to pay me or pay others to do their videos for them. But I don't understand what the point is if once you're in, then you can't, you know, make good videos that Amazon will approve later. So just make sure that you're doing it all correctly to begin with. Just practice and you'll be good to go. Don't worry about how you sound. Don't worry about if you feel like you look weird. You will get used to, to it. 700 videos down the line, it's you're not going to worry about that one video that you did, you know, on the sunscreen where you had a pimple or something like that. You know, there's just so many videos you're making. These videos are not going to be shared. Nobody can repost them you're fine. Don't worry about scripting what you're going to say. Don't worry if you stutter, if you don't like the way you sound, if you have an accent, any of those things. Just be authentic. And the best way that you can be authentic is to just go off the dome. If you just grab your product, turn on record, start the camera, and just talk. Talk about what you like about the product. Talk about why you bought the product. Talk about all the great features, how it works, how you put it together. And that's going to give your audience or the Amazon buyer the best authentic video review possible. Instead, don't worry about making the most perfect video, overthinking it, spending so much time on it, writing all these scripts. No, I'm serious. Just grab your product, come in front of the camera and talk. Now the next tip that I have for you is just the time limit. Try not to keep your videos too short or too long and make sure you're in the frame. That's my best advice because I get it. I get people are nervous. They want to be faceless. They don't want to, you know, to expose themselves on camera. But at least for these three videos that need to be approved in order to get the commission, put yourself in the frame. Keep your videos between a minute and a half and three minutes long and just be authentic. And if you do those things, then I think you have the greatest chance to be approved. And then once you're in, once your lock is off, you can change it up. You can go faceless. You can do other, you know, have other people voice it over for you. But I think for your first three videos, you will want it to be you and you want it to be as authentic as possible. The last tip that I have for you guys on this is to just not be creative, not step outside of your comfort zone. The last tip that I have for you guys is to just not be creative and follow everybody else's lead. What I mean by that is that for your first three videos, you don't want to be unique and try to make your videos different from other people's because these three videos are just your three videos to get you into the program, to get you commissions to get your blue lock removed. Once that's done with, once your three videos have been looked at by Amazon and approved, go ahead, be creative, be unique, make all kinds of cool video reviews that you want. But for the first three, just, I'm serious, almost keep it simple, stupid type of thing. Follow everybody else, copy what everybody else is doing, review products that don't have any other videos, and I guarantee you this will give you the greatest chance to be approved. So I hope those tips really help you out, give you some a better idea on how to make your videos so that you can get on-site commission. But there are a few myths that I kind of want to talk about because it's hard to just talk about the tips without talking about the problems that you guys are facing. So I talk to people all the time about the program and I always hear back from them on if they got approved or not.
Now, some people are really concerned because their videos are perfect. You know, they're not saying anything wrong. They're not talking about price. Their audio and video looks great. Um, and the list goes on, right? So a lot of people are concerned with the fact that Amazon might be approving you based on your social media account, based on your niche, based on the products that you're reviewing. And I really can't speak on this because I don't know the right or the wrong answers. But all I can say is that you just have to follow the instructions, follow Amazon's guidelines as best as you can and just try to make these videos to where Amazon has no choice but to approve you. Don't put anything that's like controversial in your video. Nothing that like teeters on whether it should be approved or not. Like I said, copy other people's videos almost completely and don't try to be unique for these first three. Once you're in, go ahead and change it up. I do not see how Amazon is approving or declining your videos based on your social media. I just don't think they have time to go checking it out. And if so, I don't know why they wouldn't have just declined you into the program when they checked your social media to see if you could be an influencer or not. I don't see how that ties into the whole commission unlocking your blue lock and all that stuff. Then another thing is the fact that you only have three submissions and some people are just submitting too quickly, not making enough changes and then they, before they know it, their three chances are out. So what I have to say on that is just take your time, slow down a little and try to redo your videos completely. Don't just cut out a little segment that you think is the problem and then resubmit the video. My suggestion would be to just start from scratch. Create a whole new video after you've done some research and analyzed your video and create a new, you know, a whole new review to submit. You can use the same product, but, com but create a whole new video and um, I think that will give you the better chance instead of, you know, just cutting out certain parts. And the last thing that I wanna talk about is just that I do believe Amazon is making it a little bit harder to get into the program. I have seen where, you know, people become an influencer with just a few hundred subscribers or followers and they get into the program. And then I've seen where it takes more than that. Now, yeah, I think that Amazon is pretty flexible with who they're letting be an influencer, but then when it comes to the unlocking the blue lock and, you know, on-site commission, they're being a little bit more strict on the videos. So when you check out my videos here in just a little bit, they're not the greatest. They're not, you know, super detail oriented. I made this a few months ago before I was super comfortable in front of the camera. And so I don't know if those videos would still be approved today. But what I do know is that it is possible to get your blue lock removed and it's not as hard as you may think. Just keep trying, make the tweaks that I suggested in this video, follow my tips and follow Amazon's guidelines and everything should be good to go to get you approved for on-site commission. Now, since you made it to the end of this video, I am gonna play the three videos that I use to get into the program to get my blue lock removed, and that's how I'm gonna close out the video. So I hope this video helped you. Thank you guys so much. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and stick, stick around because I have a lot more tips and helpful hints that I wanna give you guys to, to the Amazon Influencer Program. So y'all have a good one and enjoy the videos. Bye. This is the Sambucus elderberry hot drink mix. And this thing does wonders if you're feeling under the weather or you just feel a little sore throat coming on or just feel a little sickness coming on. You need to drink this right away and it helps stop you from getting extremely sick. I'm not even joking with you. And it also tastes really good. Everybody in my house likes it, from kids to adults to grandparents. The flavor is really good. This is flavored honey lemon berry, and it, it's like a purplish drink when you, when you make it. Now, this box comes with 10 packets, and each packet is one serving size. However, if you don't like things on the super sweet side, what we like to do is half the packet to create two cups of tea. Um, so it's not as sweet and also we just make it in like a small 
normal coffee mug. So with that, we just half the packets and then pour some hot water into it and it tastes amazing. Um, another thing that's great about these packets is it contains no gluten, dairy, soy, nuts, or artificial flavors. So this can really be drunk by anybody, um, except I have found out that if you are pregnant, you should consult a doctor before drinking this tea. Um, but other than that, anybody can drink it, and it's super good. And this is what it looks like. So it's almost like juice, but it tastes super good. And if you're ever sick, just please make sure you drink a cup of this and you will feel so much better, I promise. This review is over the KXF lined 720 page notebook. Now it's extremely portable and it's actually a really amazing notebook. Now I, ha I have wrote in it already and I haven't had any experience with any of the pages falling out. The pages are lined and they're really cool. Like at the top, you can put um, a memo note, you can put the date, it's already pre-written out on there. Um, they are not numbered, which is okay for me, but I just really like this notebook because you don't have to get many notebooks throughout the year. It would take a long time for you to fill this notebook up. Like I said, it's 720 pages. I believe it is 6.7 inches tall by 5.1 inches wide, and it's like a little over an inch and a half thick. So it's a really thick notebook, but it's pretty lightweight. I think it's only about like 1.6 pounds, and it's portable. You just throw it in your backpack, and like I said, you don't have to worry about getting multiple notebooks throughout the year. This thing can fit everything. Now, I have another notebook here to kind of compare it to. So it's like the standard um, notebook size. And this is how thick it is. And this is like kind of a size comparison for you. Right? Um, the notebook does ignore the sticker, but it does kind of have some writing on the front. It says believe with a little quote, but it's really not noticeable. And the cover is made out of like faux leather it's just like a little leather, but it doesn't feel cheaply made at all. And it's actually a really great notebook. Today we are going to be reviewing the My Cinema Light Box from Amazon. This is the front of the box. This is the back of the box. It comes with over a hundred letters and numbers. And it has three light up modes. And I believe it can also be battery operated or plugged into a wall. So let's open it up. The first thing I see is the cable. So this is what you would use to plug it into the wall if you want to use an outlet. Now, I also got the, the black colorway. And this is also the mini version. So I believe it comes in two different sizes. There's a mini and a larger size. So this one should measure about six inches tall by eight inches wide. So six inches tall and eight inches wide. I believe each letter should be about an inch and a half tall as well. About an inch and a half to two inches tall. Now the back of the I don't know if you can see it well because it kind of blends in, but on the back of the light box, there is a little slot where you can store your numbers. So let's open it up. Yes, so there's a little compartment here where we can put all of our letters and numbers and store it. There's also two holes so that you can mount this on a wall. And here's a closer look at the front. 
and all the numbers come in a little baggy just like this oh cool so they also give you some blank ones I think either as a spacer or maybe you can create your own and here are all the letters and numbers so you kind of have to pop them out on your own Now at first, I mean, it doesn't feel super cheapy, but it also doesn't feel super expensive. It's definitely made out of plastic. Now for the sake of uh, this demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and put the batteries in so we can turn it on. So to do that, there's just a little compartment at the bottom. And let's see here. Okay. So I don't have any AAA batteries, but it requires six AAA batteries across the bottom. Now, the letters just store in the little compartment here. So let's try to break them off. They just break off like this. Very cool. And I believe to put them on, you're just gonna slide it in like this. So it's very easy and everything looks really good. There's also some little spacers at the very end or like a little raised notch so that your letters don't fall off easily. So they'll kind of just get stuck like that. Now let's go ahead and turn it on. So to turn it on, there's gonna be a little plug right here where we're gonna plug it into and the adapter is just the normal uh, micro USB plug. So we'll plug that in and it doesn't come with a power brick. So you're going to have to find your own power source. Okay. So I got it all plugged in with the provided cord. I just needed to find my own power brick. And if you look on the side, there's a little button. So we'll click that and that's the first setting. So with one press, you get the white light just like so. Now the, if you press it again, you get like a color change effect. So I believe it's just gonna run through the colors like RGB. And when you see a color that you like, you can click the button again and it'll pause it on that color. So let's just let it run through all the lights. And I know it's a little bit hard to see. It's not very bright in lighting, but let me see what happens if I turn off the lights. So that's what it looks like in a little bit darker of a setting. And then let's say we like the green, we just click it again and it freezes on the green. So it's very cool. Turn back the light. It's a very cool little, little mini light box and the numbers are really good I don't have any complaints I think it's a great product